So, all right, it's recording, and we'll go in three, two, one. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome into the channel. If you are watching here on my channel, The Rockstar Flipper, thank you for joining me. And I have a special guest today. You guys probably know who it is. She's over that direction. It is Star from the Flippin' Hippos channel. Hey, everyone. It's Star. And if you're watching on my channel, thanks for joining us today on the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. And say hello to my special guest over there. I'm We're putting this, uh, he's somewhere. <laughs> We're putting this on both of our channels, so wherever you're watching, we appreciate it. And uh, make sure you're subscribed to the other person whose channel you're not watching on. Right. Perfect. Yeah. We wanted this to be on both channels because we think it's a very important topic. It's important not only for us and our everyday businesses, both of us, uh, is very important for those of you that want to actually take your reselling seriously and potentially scale up uh, in the future. So we want to make sure everybody that needs to see this has a chance to see it wherever you watch. Right. Yep. And we wanted to reach as many of you as we could in the community. Uh, because again, this is a very important topic. We're going to get into this in just a minute, but what we're talking about today actually saved Keith and I's business. So, uh, it's a super important topic and knowing how to go about it. Well, tell them what we're going to talk about. Well, yeah, let's jump on the subject. It's wholesale, it's bulk, it's liquidation, it's pallets. It's the entire business of buying in, uh, and selling in bigger quantities. So we all love going to thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales, and buying cool items and treasures one at a time. The thrill of the hunt's awesome. I think we'll all at some point do that to a point, uh, especially as the country continues to reopen. But it's really hard as one person or even two people like you guys have, or me and Kate, mm -hmm. to get enough inventory driving store to store to garage sale to garage sale hours on end day after day uh, when you can just make deals and have a box of two or three or 400 pieces show up to your doorstep uh, the next day. So it's really, really important if you want to scale, you have to buy in bigger quantities. And the number one email, I've always said this, that I always get from everyone is how do I buy pallets or how do I buy bulk inventory, et cetera. So that's what we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, I think it's important once that you scale up and you have all of this extra inventory to note that that actually will free you up for more of the treasure hunting. So if you have a thousand pieces arrive on your doorstep and you work hard all week getting 20 or 30 of those up or however many your goal is for the day, then you've got Saturday free and that's when you can go out to the yard sales and the thrift stores and spend an entire day going from place to place and maybe finding those once in a lifetime finds or those rare special yep. one offs that are worth a lot of money. But if you spend the whole day out and you come home with five items, that's okay because you just had a thousand items delivered to your home. If yep. you're not buying in wholesale and you're only out there thrifting and searching for those uh, one of a kind finds or those one offs and you're only coming home with five or 20 items a day or just a lot of bread and butter items, then that day is almost kind of a waste because you're not getting as much inventory. I feel less guilt spending yeah. an entire day out to find two treasures when I know I have a huge death pile, money pile, when I have money a lot pile. of inventory at home, yep. I don't feel guilty for spending eight hours out to find Thrifting. two special things or three special things because it's not a total waste. I found yep. three really great items, but I still have enough inventory to get me through the next week. Yep. So that's it. You've got to make sure you have, an, you know, a lot of people, they want to build the store and they're selling say four or five items a day, but all they're doing is going out and buying four or five items. Your store is never going to grow. You're never going to have enough stuff. Now I know a lot of you like to sell electronics, high dollar items. You don't need a ton of inventory and you can buy that stuff in bulk also. So there's mm -hmm. opportunities for that. And at the end of this uh, video, if you stick around, um, we're going to go into it a lot more and I'll show you guys a screen share of our store where we also sell bulk inventory that you can buy to stock up uh, your stores with. Uh, a lot of stuff we sell is in the one to $3 per piece range. Like a lot of clothing, shoes, we sell uh, home goods, accessories. I know there's some costume jewelry, uh, ties, there's some electronics lots. I'm actually looking through our store right now and I'll, uh, I'll share it with you guys in a little bit. There's all, there's pet gear, there's remotes, there's all sorts of stuff from our store. Makeup, I see a ton of makeup stuff. So um, we'll, we'll give you an opportunity and we'll link it all. It'll all be in these videos. It'll be linked below too, so you can mm -hmm. check it out. So I guess we're gonna start like, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, what Star just said, like 
being able to go around and do all these things. We weren't able to do all of that last year. Now, God willing, fingers crossed, please, Lord, help us. That never happens again and everything. The entire country doesn't shut down uh, overnight. But let me tell you some reasonable, plausible things that do happen all the time. Um, Stores go out of business. I've seen thrift stores close up. uh, Locations move. Uh, Maybe you live in a town that only has one or two locations, so there's not really a lot of opportunity. And do you Uh, remember when that happened to us? We got home from EB Open 2019. And our local honeypot was closed. Yes, yes, you lost it one. Closed of them. while we were in, va- in in the matter of a week, we got home uh, from open, went to go thrifting at our honeypot where we used to find really great stuff for like less than a dollar. Gone, gone, and it was thriving and fine when we left. So the, that does happen. It happened to us. Star's entire week in Vegas caused this store to go out of business in bankruptcy. <laughs> but yeah, so that can happen. And then the most common thing that happens is all of a sudden stores go from $2 pieces to $10 pieces, and it might as well not even be there anyways because you can't buy anything from the store hardly and it's a waste of time. So there are a lot of things that could happen sub the entire country shutting down that can cause you to not have a lot of good sources locally Inclement anyway. weather. Inclement weather. You know, you, you guys that live up north... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for your luck. Those of you that live in places like Pennsylvania and Ohio and Minnesota and wherever, uh, you guys can't even leave your house for weeks on end because there's 10 feet of snow. So there's a lot of things that can prevent it. And if you have a steady stream and source of merchandise coming in, then none of that really matters to you. Uh, you could be buying inventory from Florida and we're just driving it down and shipping it to you every single day. Then your biggest concern is, can your delivery man drop it to your doorstep? But that's a topic for another day. So uh, well, even if you can't, side note, real quick, sorry. If you have a post office box, mm-hmm. you can get, if they're shipping through the USPS, you can get um, items shipped to your post office. I don't think a lot of people know that. Um, if it doesn't fit in your box, it's okay. If you're paying for a post office box and you get something that's bigger than the box, they just hold it in the back for you and they put a little card. Um, We do it all the time. We get boxes that are five feet tall, just as tall as me. And we have a wee little box that we pay for. I get my thread up boxes delivered to my post office. Um, So even if you don't live in an area where you can get stuff dropped off, you can definitely, if they're shipping through the USPS. Yep. UPS is a little more particular, but yeah, the USPS will just leave you a slip. You come in, you take the slip up to the front and they hand you your box. It's done. So it's fantastic. And so there's many ways to do this and having inventory show up means you're only spending 10 minutes making a deal, hopefully. And then you've got all day to get your inventory listed, sold or whatever you want to do with it. So, okay. So let's talk about, uh, I do want to talk a little bit about how we do it. Of course, this is the question I get all the time. And so I always talk about my four ways. There's four like tried and true ways that work for me. And there's a fifth way that some people like that I'm not a big fan of, but um, I'll start in reverse with that one. So there's obviously buying off websites. There's quite a few large companies, uh, B-Stock Liquidations, um, Wholesale Ninjas, Balk. There's there's five or six big, well-known companies. Uh, what are my opinions on those? Again, take this for what it's worth. It's my opinion. I bought off of most of them. Um, they don't leave a lot of profit. Uh, You have to do a lot of research. You have to get manifest. A manifest is a list of everything that's in the lot with the conditions. If you buy stuff unmanifested, you're basically just gambling. You have no idea what you're getting or what the condition is. Um, And then your best bet is to take that manifested list and worst case scenario, add it all up, like put what you think it'll sell for, less the fees and shipping, total it all up, see what it's worth, and then see what they're selling it for, and assume that 10 to 20% of that money is going to be junk or trash anyways. So if you're paying $1,000 for a pallet and you think you can sell it for two grand, uh, you know you're going to throw away two or 300 bucks, so you're really only going to get you know, 16, 1,700 probably in pocket. You're paying 1,000 and then maybe you're spending a couple hundred on shipping. There's really not that much money left over. Not to say you can't buy a pallet for five or 600 and sell for two or three grand. It happens, mm-hmm. but these, these companies are experienced and they know what they're doing and they typically don't let that sort of stuff slip through all that often. Um, and there are exceptions, of course. So uh, I think there's better ways to do it. If you want an instant way to log into a website, scroll down, find a lot, order it and go, um, absolutely. So that's that's one option and I'll I'll... I'll separate ours. So the second option is buying off our website. We do the same thing as they do, but we don't price things based on like eBay sales or whatever. We price it on exactly what we would want to pay for it if we were buying it. And like Mm -hmm. I said, a majority of our merchandise is a dollar 
to three dollars a unit. People buy stuff off our, our site every day for two dollars, a dollar fifty. Um, some of these big bulk sites I see four and five and six dollars. Our site will also calculate the shipping so you can just add it to your cart and type in your shipping information and hit calculate and it'll tell you what the all in price will be. So um, yep. that's an option. It'll be linked below and uh, I'll actually do a screen share of our site uh, after we're done this. So the third way that people buy in bulk, and this used to be an old time way and it still works today and it used to be my favorite way to do it, was buying out estate sales, garage sales, moving sales. Um, especially if you live near a military base, that's one that, uh, I, I don't live near, I live near a military base, but it's kind of like an hour away. So I never wanted to do it, but military people move so often. They're constantly moving sales. If you monitor Craigslist and the local newspapers, or if you live in the areas, uh, everyone knows where their military base is. So like the neighborhoods right outside of it, you can mm -hmm. drive through there on the weekends and you'll just see sale after sale, after sale, people moving in, people moving out, um, et cetera. Uh, you can make offers. You can, you know, go to somebody and say, Hey, if you don't sell the whole thing, I'll buy what's left. Or you can go to them before the sale and say, Hey, I'll take it all before you even put it out. Uh, you could go to, you know, every sale. Let's say that you're a niche buyer that loves to buy, uh, craft supplies and craft materials. You could go to every one of those and just say, Hey, do you have any of this? Do you have any of this? You could do that through Craigslist, through the yard sale app, through all kinds of different places, Google, and uh, the local newspapers still do it. I know people yep. hate this, but. Well, I used to do that with plush. I would just go to neighborhood sales and anyone that had plush out, I would just walk up to them and yep. say, I want all the plush on your lawn. They're like, well, I was asking, you know, a buck a piece. I'm like, okay, but I want to buy all 200. Can I have them for 50 cents for a hundred yeah, bucks? Yep. And I would hit one neighborhood and come home with five, 600 plushies that I paid 50 cents a quarter for yep. because I would just hit every single house and, at that price, I didn't comp them. I didn't care what they were. I yeah, because you know a couple of them will pay for it. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, so that's our third way is buyouts. Um, you can email people off Craigslist or the garage sale app before you even drive over there. You can drive around the day of, day after. Um, you know, you can message these people and just say, "What do you have?" The other place that you can find them is, of course, in the Facebook groups. Uh, there are specific cities for um, garage sales mm -hmm. and also buy, sell trades. So for example, uh, I live near Tampa, so I could go in there and look up Tampa or Riverview, which is another city nearby, Riverview yard sale under the group search or Tampa yard sale, Tampa buy, sell trade. There's tons of words to do it. And you'll find people advertising their yard sales. You'll find people advertising community sales, which is fantastic, church sales, uh, all that sort of stuff. So another, you know, lumped in there opportunity to buy out stuff or buy portions of it. You don't have to buy the wholesale. Maybe you're a tool buyer. You're like, I'll take all your tools or all your plush or whatever. So um, that's the third way. And that used to be the way that I lived on. We had an auction house and whenever they did auctions, whatever didn't sell, they'd put them on pallets and they'd be like 20 bucks a pallet. I literally would back up and be like, I'll take all six pallets, 120 bucks. I had a Hummer and we would just stuff that thing till we couldn't stuff it anymore. I'd drive it home. We didn't even know what we bought. They just had boxes just stacked up yeah. on a pallet or, or bins. And I'm like, I'll take it all for 20 bucks. I'll take the whole pallet. That's I used to come home with so much stuff. It was like a, a treasure hunt when I got home. That's um, how I used to always, how I used to get my most of my blush. So yep. we're talking yeah. pre-COVID days. Yeah, pre-COVID, but it's coming back around. So those things <laughs> yeah. are, you know, more and more sales. So that's the third way. That's a tried and true way uh, that buying uh, bulk is. The fourth way is probably the one I use the most now. This takes a little bit of work and a little bit of time to build up, but it is definitely social media. It is the internet. It is networking inside of reseller Facebook groups, uh, Instagram, uh, your own business page on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, it takes a little bit of experience, a little bit of know-how, a little bit of, like I said, time to build a following, but there's a ton of resellers. If you're active in the reseller community, People quit every day. People transfer from clothes to hard goods or hard goods to clothes or men's to women's. They want to get rid of all of this inventory, but they're keeping this inventory or mm -hmm. vice versa. So there's a million ways where somebody will say, you know, I just saw a post this morning that was just a girl that was just like, I hate shoes. I hate clothes. I don't sell it. I sell other stuff, but I came across this box of like 60 pairs of high heels they weren't amazing, but they were decent ones. And she's like, I just want $2 a pair for them. And like she had a hundred messages mm -hmm. competitive. But if you're proactively going out looking for this stuff, you're not really yeah. competing with people. So And learn your hashtags, people. Learn your hashtags. Hashtags for sure. I have had people contact me with offers on plush and jeans just because of my networking, because I have a YouTube, because I have a following. But you don't necessarily need that. If you're active on Instagram all the time and let's say you love selling 
women's jeans. And you're constantly hashtagging Miss Me, Silver, True Religion, women's jeans, women's fashion. And you build up that following on Instagram who all start to know you as someone who sells jeans. Mm -hmm. Someone may contact you and say, hey, look, I got 100 pair of jeans. I'm looking to get five bucks a piece. They're all these brands that sell for $40 or more or whatever the deal is. Um, but learn your hashtags because that will help you connect with people within the reselling community that yeah. know your niche. And then when, when, and if they need to sell, they know who to like, I'm pretty much synonymous with plush. When you think of plush, you either think of me or Robert or both of us. Um, so that's what you want to do is use your hashtags and connect with people who will start to think of you as a person who likes teapots or jeans or coffee mugs. And then they will contact you when they want to get rid of it. Yeah. So that's, that's again, build up the following. You don't have to have thousands of followers. You can just search hashtags and find the people that are using those tags and contact them, send them a DM, comment on one of their posts, you know, follow them, uh, invite them to follow you, all that stuff. So very easy to do. It just takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of work. Instagram is probably your best bet. Facebook groups, uh, be careful, you know, don't advertise or get yourself kicked out. But if you see somebody, you know, feel free to comment on their post or feel free to message them and say, Hey, is there by chance you have anything else or whatever? Uh, and if they're, if it's allowed in the group, then go crazy. Uh, so that's the fourth way is really working that social media and networking. The fifth way is this way is way that, you know, I use, it's not as known. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's harder and you really have to be willing to be uh, a cold caller, but, uh, so shop, everyone knows shop goodwill, right? So shop goodwill is their online auction site. They sell individual items. They also sell pallets or things occasionally or boxes of stuff. Um, it's a decent site. You're not going to find a ton of stuff, but you can find a little bit. But the workaround to that is actually calling stores, calling places. So going out of business is great. It doesn't happen all the time. But uh, if it does, you can definitely hit up stores, you know, like when Macy's or Sears or JCPenney's closed. Or like when stores. you bought out Plato's. Plato's Closet, right. Yeah, that Plato's was closing that location and moving to another one. And I, they were just like a dollar a piece. I bought like 600 pieces or some crap. So, um, Stores that are moving, going out of business or having like a clear the rack clearance, you know, people go to Nordstrom Rack. It's terrible around here, but some people do very well at it. That's an option, but also contacting these stores, even if they're not going out of business. So I'll give you a really good example of a guy. Uh, I won't get into what it is or what he does or whatever, but he went to a store for an item, a specific item. And uh, he was able to buy, let's say every time he went to the store, five or 10 of them, 15 of them. And he went to him and he's like, look, it looks like you guys don't sell a whole lot of these out on the shelf. I'm the only guy buying them, but I know you got to have a whole bunch more in the back. And they're like, oh yeah, God, we have tons of those that we just don't get to. And we only put out five or 10 when you buy them. And he's like, well, what do you got in the back? They're like, we got thousands. He goes, can I look through them? Can I buy? And sure enough, he comes home with 500 of X item. We'll just call it t-shirts, you know, rock t-shirts or whatever it was. And they were like, oh, you know, we put them out for $4 a piece. He's like, tell you what, I'll take them all at two fifty dollars a piece. And they're like, sold. And so all of a sudden he's bought hundreds of pieces. And now every month they call him once a month. And they're like, hey, we got a whole big pile. Come on in. So he's called all of his Goodwills, all of his Salvation Armies, all of his thrift stores. And he's like, do you guys have X in the back? Um, and he's made deals with all these stores and managers. So this is this is one that we've done. And we've done it with other stuff too. Uh, you know, there's, there's electronics places. There's... Uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, thrift stores with the with the tractor trailer that we bought. It wasn't the greatest experience. It wasn't horrendous. It was a learning experience. It's not that we shouldn't have done it. It's that there's better ways to do it. There's better ways to do it, but it, <laughs> it was a learning experience. Yeah. And you don't get anywhere in life without mm -hmm. making mistakes. Or I mean, we made money on it. So it's not like, yeah, it's not like it was the worst thing. We spent a ton of time, but we did make money. Um, but here's the thing. That was a thrift store that because of COVID was closed. And so their store was full of inventory, fully stock store. They can't sell anything because no one's allowed in the store for four months. I think they were closed. So mm -hmm. all their donations are just piling up in this storage unit in this building. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, we'll put it on a truck, drive it down to you. There's better ways. But that's what happens to stores even on a non-COVID time. Let's say that, you know, they're stocking winter jackets in Florida. <laughs> All of a sudden, they've got a thousand winter jackets in the back that nobody's going to buy, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you go in there and you're like, do you guys have to have jackets and coats? Typically they'll be like, oh, we just trash them. We get rid of them. And um, you go in and you're like, I'll give you two bucks a piece for the jackets. Just because you live in Florida, I can sell jackets to somebody in Nome, Alaska. Who cares? So uh, mm -hmm. there are ways to network with the stores and buy out of the back, buy inventory, et cetera. So that's the fifth way. Uh, that takes a little bit more courage. I know people are kind of iffy and scary about talking to managers or calling stores. Just do it. The worst they're going to do is say no. Yeah. And then when you're on the phone, it's, it's, it's easier. You're not face to face. Like, who yeah, cares? I, always, I think people that just complain about cold calling, I don't like cold calling. It's not my favorite thing in the world. But God, I would much rather cold call than have to go in and stand at the front and wait for the manager. Ugh, I hate that. See, I would rather go in because I was raised by a Southern family. And to me, when you're face to face and you can shake shake a man's hand and make a deal. It's with easier them. to make a deal. It is easier to make a deal. I will agree with that. Um, if I'm at a store already, and that's what I would recommend, if you're going around to your routes, when you go to the store, since you're going to be there anyways, then ask like, hey, I'm here shopping today. Uh, can you get me the manager? You know, go about your business. And then as soon as they come out, be like, hey, what's up? Then you can make an easier deal. I definitely make a deal um, and easier. Make some relationships in your thread. Your, I mean, aside from wholesaling, um, honey catches more flies than vinegar. We all know that. Be nice to people. Be nice to people. You never know who will call you. Yep. Yep. And make relationships and be memorable. Say hi. Tell them your name. Um, and get to know like the people at your goodwills. And eventually, like the one up here, they associate me with blush as well. And they pull blush aside from me and, and would get me deals. This was pre-COVID. But um, and then, you know, now I'm comfortable enough in that store and I know all the employees and the manager and they, they're like, oh, here comes a girl that buys two carts full of plush. Yeah. I would just tell the manager, do you have any more in the back? So just even building those relationships and being nice to people, it might come about without you having to ask for it. They might be like, yeah. you come here every week and we see you load up your cart with jeans. You know, we got more in the back. Would you like to look through them? I have lots mm -hmm. of reseller friends that actually have managers approach them when they see them come in and be like, Hey, we got all this stuff in. Do you want to look at it? Yep. So just be memorable. Don't be the mouse that's timid and just <laughs> kind of hiding in the thrift store. I know that there are horror stories. I think we just had a thread in my Facebook group the other day about uh, employees or managers at Goodwills who find out you're a reseller and treat you like garbage. But that's, that's rare. I think that's more rare. Usually when they find out what you do for a living, they're excited. They want to learn about it. They ask you questions and then they will start to hold stuff for you or bring stuff out for you. So, I mean, that's kind of, you know, gave your situation. Don't walk into the store and be like, hi, everybody in the store. I'm a reseller. But yeah. as you go in more and more often and they recognize you and you talk to them, don't be afraid to tell them and ask if there's more stuff you can buy. That's been my experience. They're more, um, they're more welcoming than they are. I've only ever had one manager employee really turned off. Um, everyone else seems really welcoming. Uh, two little side notes to that. Business cards, question we get asked all the time. It cannot hurt. Absolutely have some made, have some with you um, to give to them. Uh, front, just kind of like your contact information, name, number, email, uh, graphic, whatever you decide on. On the back, list of everything that you buy like a nice little like, you know, two thing list. Keep it simple, keep it easy. They just need a way to get a hold of you and know what to get a hold of you about. Uh, so that's one. And two, uh, if you do go into these stores and you do request a manager and you do go up and you're ready to like make that deal and you're like, ah, I want to buy this, be prepared to make the deal and be prepared to buy the stuff right then and there that day um, because they don't want to waste their time working with you. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'll get back to you next week. I don't have the money or I wasn't prepared to pick it up or whatever. No, be ready to get the stuff. We just made a deal this morning. Keith saw me emailing somebody late last night uh, about a deal. I made the deal. And then she's like, you know, here's my number. Let's uh, set up what day we're doing it next week. Cause I was like, when do you want me to get it? And she's like, uh, I need to get it, you know, get to it this weekend and get it all set and ready. I'm like, you, you just tell me what day and, and we're ready to come. So just mm -hmm. be ready to make that deal. We bought 3,200 scrubs last week and that lady was like in California and her mom happened to own a store that closed and, and sold it to us uh, about an hour and 10 or 20 minutes away from here. And um, she was like, it, it's got to go now. And I was like, crap, I got to get a truck and I'll be there Wednesday. And then it was like, go, go, go. So when you're ready to make the deal, go. Like, don't wait yeah. around. Yeah. Yep. 
Don't and worry. also another side side note, <laughs> if you don't want to give out your actual phone number to these places on the business card, you can get those pseudo numbers from like Google, Google voice. Yeah. Um, Google Voice, and there's another one I keep seeing advertised on Hulu, but you can just Google uh, pseudo number. Do you know which one I'm talking about that I keep seeing the commercials for? Or we're just going to say Star had a brain fart. You can Google it. But you can set up these front numbers that you give out to folks, and then it will go to your phone, but they will never have your real number. So if you're uncomfortable with handing your number out to 100 people in a neighborhood sale, you can get these, um, I call them faux front numbers, whatever you want to yeah. call them. So Skype, Skype has one. Ring Blaze is another one that I've heard of. Uh, Google Voice is just the easiest. It's what I use. So Yeah, we uh, have one um, that Keith uses um, from back in the day when we did cell phones. Because sometimes when you deal in cell phones, you deal with shady people. <laughs> so, yes. Electronics, yeah. Uh, open yeah. Voice, Nextivia. That's it. Open voice is the one I keep seeing the commercials for. Yeah. So there's a lot of options. Google voice, probably the easiest, quickest, but uh, if you don't feel comfortable, definitely email, you know, make sure you have an email and a dedicated phone number for that. Put it on the business card out the door you go and it'll ring to your phone and you can choose to answer it or not. Uh, they also have with Google voice, you can get text, so you can do yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the recommendation. That's five ways to source bulk merchandise. Obviously, um, if you want to just buy directly from us for certain things, you know, please bookmark the site. We'll link it below. Sometimes we have a lot of stuff. Sometimes we have a little stuff. We're working on building it up. So we have a ton of stuff. And, you know, sometimes we'll have electronics. Sometimes we'll have a ton of clothes. So always check back. If there's nothing you like today, uh, Keith adds new lots uh, almost every day as long as we have new stuff coming in. So let me start by... Um, can I screen share? Uh, I might have to do it from my end. Oh, no, I can. I got it. Okay. Chrome tab, uh, liquidation mm -hmm. lots. Is that popping yeah, we, up? We, um, no. You have to add it. Yeah, you have to add it to the show. Click on the screen there. There we go. There we go. And you can so, make it full screen. Yeah, so. Keith's out here every morning, first thing. Um, do you want to make that full screen so it's as big as it's possible? Yeah. You, you can get rid of our I wasn't listening. Um, yeah, every morning. So my viewers know my thing and first thing in the morning is the unsold. This is what Keith's doing while I do those. Yep. So you guys can see, I'm just scrolling down here. It says sold out. We try to delete them. Basically when an item sells and it's sold out, we give it a week or two to make sure it shows up and everything's good. And, and then we'll delete it off the lot so it doesn't clog the site. But uh, everything that doesn't say sold out is available and active. Um, I mean, everything from here's 16 pieces of new electronics and smartwatches. Here's a bunch of clothes. Um, we've got, uh, let's see, down here is a box of remotes. Here's makeup, dresses. Um, here's a big lot of DVD, VCR combos and unit players for $1,400. Uh, we have lots for $300, $100. Uh, there's lots for $73. So every budget, everywhere from, you know, our cheapest lots are typically like around $75, $50 to $75. And then they go all the way up into the thousands of dollars, depending on what you want, you know, here's a $300 lot, $220 lot of, you know, men's brand new dress pants and khakis. So there's a big mix of everything. Uh, the lots of hats sold out. We had lots of hats. Um, so all kinds of different things. Uh, here's more makeup and, uh, they have lot numbers. So if you have any questions about it, you can email us, uh, liquidation lots for less, the number four less at gmail.com. You can email us about any of these um, lots. There's also a messaging service through the Shopify that you can send as well as if you like. Uh, jewelry, uh, costume jewelry, there's games, there's toys. So we update this. The products rotate all the time. That's our site. We'll link it. Make sure you bookmark it. Star, you can pop that down. I'll close that. There we go. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's one source. And then all the other sources we talked about are ways for you to, to scale up the business. It's super important that you do it. Um, it's super important that you start thinking outside of the box uh, in the event that the world shuts down again or that mm -hmm. you just don't get good inventory through your other routes. Uh, do we want to? Well, I'll also say real quick, wholesale is super important um, because, like he said, we may never have another shutdown, but you never know what's going to happen. Um, and when the shutdown happened last year, everything in PA was closed, even the liquor stores. Like the only thing that was open was the grocery stores and uh, Keith and I had just finished clearing out all of our money piles or death piles. Um, 
because we were coming into spring. So we had, you know, extras for the winter and then we got rid of it all. We had absolutely nothing to list and we freaked out. And um, that was when we started actually thinking, well, hey, let's get wholesale for ourselves. And it saved our business. It's how we got inventory for a full year. And now I'm spoiled. I'm spoiled rotten. Um, <laughs> I, the thrill of the hunt. It never goes away. It never goes it away. It never goes away, but it almost is gone for me, to be really? quite frankly honest with you. Um, I said this on my live show the other night with Robert on there that I think the shutdown ruined me <laughs> because <laughs> I don't want to leave my house anymore. I can get my food delivered. All the things that they made to accommodate us during the shutdown, <laughs> and now I get my inventory at home. Yeah. I think I'm pretty much set, but... I, I would say the thrill of the hunt supplying my business is gone. I don't rely on it and I don't like think of it like I used to where I used to go to like a flea market or a state sale and like I had to get stuff because I knew I had to have inventory and now I can go to them and look at something and just be like, it doesn't matter. It's but, not worth it. I don't need yeah, it. it. It may not even be worth my time. Like, oh, it's 10 bucks and it's going to sell for 30 or 40. I used to be like, I need to grab this. Now I'm like, man, is it really worth me getting it? But I can tell you the enjoyment I get from going and looking at all this stuff. I still, the, the angle still hits my head where I'm like, man, I wonder what that's worth. I should look that up. I, it's cool. But I, I still, I would rather walk in and be like, you know, we did it at the estate sale down here in Florida, those 1300 ties or whatever that we sold. Yeah. Where I just walked in. I'm like, I'll take all these two gone. If I had gone in there and he had all these ties out on racks, I'd have been like, holy I'm crap. Crazy. Having to flip through them would have been like, no, no thanks. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't been to a yard sale in like a year and a half, two years. Me so. neither. All last year. I went to one or two at the beginning of last year, but not since. Yeah. I went to a couple yeah. of state sales. I went to. I haven't. What? I mean, I think we went to the thrift store twice last yeah. year when they opened well, when they opened back up. It just wasn't the same. Like digging through the plush and trying to find the good ones is still exciting. But why go to the thrift store and dig through a shelf when I can have 500 delivered here? Yeah, for, and, and only come home with five or 10. Yeah. Not good. I, I don't know. But the thrill of the hunt, I guess, is. It, it is. It's fun. It's always going to be in me. <laughs> it's always. I would much there. rather. I'm a preclusive person, though. Like, I All want. Right. I just don't want to leave my house anymore. <laughs> I'm so spoiled. It's but. True. It's true. Um, we absolutely would not have had any inventory last year to list at all if we hadn't have started scaling up. And it's a good way to scale up. Like he said at the beginning, if you're selling five a day and you're only listing five a day because that's all you can find when you're outsourcing, you're going to start spinning your wheels and you're never going to grow. Yep. You've got to scale up. You've got to list more, to sell more, to have more capital, to buy bigger. Oh, I, I see it all the time. People that have 300 or 400 listings, you know, in January, and then it's three or four months later, they email me and they have the same amount of items. And then they show me their 90 day sales, like, you know, a thousand in sales, a thousand in sales, a thousand in sales, a thousand. In sales. It's the same. It's never going up. Cause I'm like, you're not adding enough inventory. You're not, you know, adjusting what you're buying. You're not looking for a better item all the stuff and they're just doing the same thing. So you gotta, you gotta look outside of it. The other thing we almost forgot, the other thing that we can do for everyone, if you do uh, transition to other merchandise, if you do decide to quit for whatever reason, if you do decide to go from women's to men's or hard goods to soft goods or vice versa, um, we're happy to put it on our site for you. Um, we actually are constantly looking for new lots to put up. We have hundreds of thousands of viewers between us that can look at our uh, site that buy from us. We have thousands of unique buyers who have purchased off the site. We sell dozens and dozens of boxes a week, uh, if not hundreds a month. So um, if there's inventory you want to turn into capital, please uh, reach out to us. The email, uh, we'll put it below, is liquidationlots for less. That's the number four less at gmail.com. And um, you'll just uh, include you know, your contact information and what you have, give us a quantity account of what you have, you know, any kind of information like brands, styles, items, um, where you're located, give us a zip code so we can, uh, we always make our buyers pay shipping. That's kind of part of buying in bulk. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then we'll, we'll follow up with what other information we need, like uh, weights or size of the boxes and uh, we'll get it up and get it sold for you. So yeah. uh, it's fantastic. We have, I don't know what our percentage of sell through rate is, but it's really high. It's, it's like we're, we're selling boxes every day. We're helping people sell their stuff every single yeah. day. I would say 30 to 40% of all the lots Keith puts up sell within a week or two. Um, and I would say 50% of all the lots sell within a month. 
yeah. Easily. And if they're not moving, it might be just that you priced it too high. And you can you can always email us again and say, hey, I've had my stuff up for a couple of weeks and I wanted it to sell faster. And we can take a look at that for you and say, oh, maybe you've got these priced too high. We can always help you with that as well if it's not moving quick enough for you. Um, and one thing I really want to add, because I, I hear this all the time when I tell people that we can help you get rid of your inventory or whatever type of inventory you're trying to transition out of. Usually people are getting out of clothes, <laughs> to be honest. It's yeah. just people tell me, I don't want to sell clothes anymore. I'm tired of it. And I'll tell them, um, you're never too small, okay? We don't just deal in pallets and truckloads. Right. I think that's a common misconception, and I've heard that at least five times since last week from folks who messaged me or talked to me in my Facebook group. We don't just do truckloads and pallets. If you have a box of 100 items, that's fine. That's wholesale. We can help you get rid of it. Like he said, we have stuff for every single budget for buyers who want to buy to resell, mm -hmm. but we can also help every single budget and size get rid of their stuff. So don't yeah. think that just because you only have 400 pieces or 200 pieces that you're not big enough for us, we can still help you move it. Yep. There's people that like to start slow with wholesale. Like they just want to buy a box of 50 or a hundred and um, they don't want to buy three or 4,000 pieces at one time. So absolutely. You have 50 shirts and 50 pair of shorts for sure. We'll do two boxes, one each and up they go and, and they'll, they'll sell. Trust me, people have budgets of a hundred to two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's new resellers who don't have a lot of capital who are mm -hmm. just getting into this to get started or like just getting their feet wet. Um, so yeah, I I hear it all the time though. Like, I didn't think you guys did this. Don't you guys just do big wholesale nope. truckloads and pallets? Nope. Every single day we're selling boxes of fifty items for people or of our own stuff. So. Um, you're never too oh. small. If you've got stuff you want to get rid of, it's got to be quantity. We don't do one-offs. No, not one or two. <laughs> one or two is too small. But if you've got like a box full of uh, 50 or 100, um, that's not too small. Nope. We'll take it. Uh, email us, please. Message us. Email us. Liquidation lots, the number four less at gmail.com. Liquidation lots for less at gmail.com. And uh, we check it every day. We clear the emails every day. So as soon as you get us the information, it's listed. And we'll start working on getting it sold. So, um, yep. yeah. And just keep in mind that um, you are selling to other resellers. That's another point yeah, I want to make, make sure you are pricing it, yeah, reasonable yeah. so they can make money. If you want um, eBay prices, you're going to have to list it on eBay. Uh, yep. we, one we charge, one. Yeah, the question we get is what do we charge? It's flat 10%. So the buyers pay shipping um, and we charge 10%. So if you have a box that you want $100 for, and the buyer pays a twenty dollar uh, shipping label. It's one hundred twenty bucks, and we charge you twelve. So you'll be paid one hundred eight dollars, and then you buy the label and ship it out, and you're all set. Yep, ten um, percent. But yeah, buyer pay buyer pays up front with the shipping, of course. So they go on our site, they find a lot that they want, they type it in, they're like, oh, it's hundred bucks, it's twenty shipping, sweet. They pay. Uh, our website takes in the hundred twenty dollars. We email you over their shipping information and the uh, the breakdown of the the price and the shipping less than ten percent. Uh, you print out a shipping label and send me the tracking number and your PayPal email and uh, get the box out and I send you payment. So you will be paid uh, as the box goes out the door. So typically it's all on the same day if we, if we work quick enough. So it's very, very fast. Yep. Very, very easy too. Yep. And so that's easy. So go yep. check, go check out our site. You'll get a better idea of what people are looking for and what sells and then um, send us over what you have. Yep. We have people that buy and sell on our site too. Yep. They do. They do. <laughs> Don't be, don't forget to look around and see if there's anything you want. Cause yep. 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 So we that's buy what from our own selves. Sometimes too. <laughs> we buy from our own stock. <laughs> we, we do. Sometimes we get lots that come in and we go to put it up and then I'm like, Keith, don't put that up. I'm taking that. Yeah. Hey, don't, don't put the plush up. I want it. <laughs> yep. We've stolen, we've stolen many lots. We've, I've stolen tie lots. You've stolen plush. We, that people that were going to sell us those clothes and, plush that are sitting in the warehouse right now. We're asking me to put it on the, on the, uh, the site and I never let it get up there. I'm like, Nope, we'll take it. <laughs> so yeah. that's where a lot, I'm serious guys, where a lot of inventory comes from where we buy in bulk. I don't think any of us have sourced enough from the thrift stores to even buy lunch. Like, <laughs> I, don't, no. I don't think so. So, yeah. So that's wholesale. That's bulk. That's what we do every day. Just about now. Uh, it's what we're, you know, transitioned our, our business to a lot more of. 
and hopefully we can build this site up bigger for a lot of you to source out of too. Yep. Anything else you want to come up? Forless.com. Yep. And uh, it'll all be linked below for Shopify. Yeah. So is there anything else that you, anything else we forgot that we need to cover? No, I think that's it. I think it's I just think super it. important to scale up and grow your business. Um, and you can start small. You can, you know. Yep. Start One box, small box, $100 box. It's easy. It's just really important. And you know what? Actually, I do I have one more thing I'd like to add. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about Vicky from Katie and Vicky for a second. Mm -hmm. Throw her under the bus. But the, this is a story that she tells people all the time. Before COVID, she used to pride herself on the fact that she never had death piles. Remember that? Yeah. You think she sourced, she brought home, and she listed before she would source again. And that was Vicky's yeah. um, point of pride that she never had an excess laying around that it was all listed and when the shutdown happened she yeah. was pretty much screwed too so um she now does buy in bulk and wholesale she buys extra when she goes out and she has that pile laying around yeah. we're not saying to fill up five rooms of your house <laughs> but even someone like vicky who for 20 years never had a death pile and that was her point of pride learned that life happens and sometimes it's super important that you have some extra inventory laying around for a rainy day, snowy day or a pandemic day. All the above. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, so. sure. for sure. Yeah. They scrambled right at the last minute, right. When we started getting those, like in two weeks, two weeks from Monday, everything shut down. They, they scrambled hard and got, you know, I know Katie picked up a lot of inventory right at the last minute, but yeah, you never know what's going to happen. And you, I mean, here's the, I didn't even throw this out there. Dave used to give me this all the time. He's like, what if you fall and break your leg tomorrow and you can't drive? What if you're out of commission for a couple of weeks? What if you, you know, have a sickness? What if you, what if you, uh, uh, you know, walked out in front of a bus and bumped your head? I'm like, well, you probably wouldn't be worried about inventory too much, but that he, the point was was made. Like, yeah, something could happen. You could break yeah. your, you could break your arm and you, you can't drive anymore. So, yeah, that definitely there's you know maybe your car breaks down. Who knows? Yeah, there's a, a million things that could happen to keep you from being able to go out and source. And yep. if you have stuff already around the house, um, you can have a broken anything and still photograph. I am I can tell you that. I have a disability. I have a bad back. I can't lift. I can't stand. I can't bend. And um, my viewers have probably seen my videos that I've done on this. But I do everything sitting down on rolly chairs. So if you have the inventory at your house, you're pretty much set. Even if you break your leg or your arm, you can find a way to photograph it and list it. Even if you have to peck with one finger with the other arm in the cast. Don't but, make it happen. You know, you, you, I just think it's super. I always thought it was super important to have extra stuff around in the winter. That was our thing. We always would store away like squirrels. Um, yeah, we would, we would start squirreling away in the fall, but then we would get rid of it by the spring. And last spring was when the shutdown happened, right when we had gotten rid of it that, that year for 2020. And I was like, oh, never again. I don't, I don't. I don't ever want to be in a position where I'm freaking out. Like, where are we going to get our inventory from? Yep. We're good to go now. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if you're not listing, your store is not active. And if you're, or you're not listing, your closet is inactive, wherever you're listing, you've got to be active every day and adding new items. Yep. So this is how you do it. So hopefully we helped you learn a few ways. You can go out and try them. Please comment on the videos. If you do, any of this stuff, or if you use our videos to go out and try some of these methods, let us know how it works for you. Uh, any questions, other comments, concerns about the store, about selling your stuff, about buying from us, uh, please email us liquidationlots for less at gmail.com, or you can comment below as well, and I'll check the comments off and on no matter which channel you're on. So Yeah, and don't forget to join our Facebook group, the Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. There you go. Your Facebook group is Thrifter and Reseller World. Thrifter Reseller World and the Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. Um, other than that, that's what I got for you. Uh, I'm going to cut this and leave it on my channel. It will also be on Star's channel sim simultaneously. Oh, I can never Simultaneously. Say. Yeah, at the same time. <laughs> and so, We're going to put these up together at the same time, the same time. on our that, respective channels. Yeah, um, that, that word I can't say. <laughs> hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to him if you're watching on my channel. Subscribe to Subscribe me if you're on his channel. Yep, I'll link her video below on mine. Go be productive. Go make some money. Make some money, and we'll see you guys next time. Y'all are the best. Goodbye. Bye.